Welcome back everyone, this is going to be my Mortal Kombat review for the new movie. They also dropped the opening scene, so I'll talk about that and what's going on with this movie, how it's different from the original Mortal Kombat movie, and how it adapts some of the storyline from the games, and what their plans are for future Mortal Kombat movies. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. The movie is going to be out pretty much everywhere later this week if you haven't seen it already. I believe it's already dropped in a couple countries internationally. If you have seen it, please don't post really huge spoilers in the comments yet, but I will explain some of the changes they made from the original movie because you come into a Mortal Kombat movie with certain expectations for what they're going to be doing with the story, with the characters. I know there are a lot of questions about characters that you did not see in any of the trailer footage. For the most part, they are pretty authentic to the games in the video game story. Really funny detail, a lot of you may not have realized that Louis Tan, who plays the main character Cole, actually said he auditioned for the title role of Shang-Chi. Marvel just dropped their Shang-Chi trailer, so a whole lot of martial arts related movies coming out right now are dropping trailers right now. All of his fight scenes in the Mortal Kombat movie are great, but I think the reason why he lost out on the Shang-Chi role is because they wanted more of a comedic spin, and he didn't really have the comedic background that Simu Liu has, who comes from sitcoms. So it'll be fun to compare Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings in the Marvel Universe to Mortal Kombat just in terms of the way they plot their fight scenes out. Mortal Kombat is a little more MMA, Shang-Chi looks like it's going to be more of a traditional kung fu type of movie. But I'll just start with the opening scene here. Obviously this is meant to be the origin story of Hanzo Hasashi becoming the scorpion that you know and love from the Mortal Kombat video game series and Bihan, the original version of Sub-Zero. There's only one scorpion in the video game series, but there have been a couple different people to bear the mantle of Sub-Zero. They don't totally cover why Bihan wanted to kill Hanzo in this opening scene and his entire clan. They do actually cover that story in the later video games. It gets way more cosmic and twisty than you would ever expect with Elder Gods and Titans manipulating events on this grand cosmic scale in the Mortal Kombat multiverse of realms, but this first new rebooted Mortal Kombat movie is mostly meant to be an origin story, and they're sort of using the Scorpion character and his family line as the introduction to that. That's why he has the opening scene here. Like, this is the first chapter, a prequel of sorts, to the traditional Mortal Kombat story of the tournament that you would normally expect. So that was probably my biggest surprise with this movie in particular, is that the tournament is very important to the story, of course, but the tournament itself doesn't happen during this film. It won't happen till the sequel movie. It's all set up for the tournament. Like, the whole plot of this movie is mostly just world building and origin stories for all the main characters and a soft introduction to some of the lore and the backstory of the story universe. Because, like I said, it gets way more cosmic than you would ever expect based on the original games. If you only played the original games and you haven't been playing some of the more recent ones, the story has gotten really, really deep and really crazy. They've gone full Marvel Cinematic Universe with the Mortal Kombat story. I'll talk about that too as I get deeper into my review because it does seem like they're trying to plot this out the same way they plot out the Marvel movies, the same way that Legendary with the MonsterVerse, the Godzilla, and the Kong movies are trying to plot their movies out in a very Marvel Cinematic Universe type of way. But in this first new rebooted movie, you do get a little bit of that multiverse storytelling through the Raiden character in Shang Tsung as they explain the Tournament of Realms, setting up the sequel, where Earthrealm, the main universe of champions, battle the champions of Outworld. So that is probably the biggest difference between this rebooted movie and the original Mortal Kombat movie from the 90s. In that movie, they really just do the quick character intros for all the mains, then boom, you're in Outworld and they're having that first tournament. They did make a sequel to that movie called Mortal Kombat Annihilation, but I can't stress this enough, you do not have to watch that. It's a rite of passage for hardcore fans, but it is an endurance test. It is not a great film, so you don't have to see it if you're not a big super fan. The other really big change from the original movie, just in terms of the way they plot the story out, is that in the original movie, it's mostly built around Liu Kang's story, trying to get revenge for the death of his brother, then he learns about the tournament and gets swept up in this big fight against Shang Tsung. In the new movie, the main character is Cole, Louis Tan's character, and they use him as a POV character to sort of reintroduce you to the new version of the Mortal Kombat story universe. But like I said, it's mostly framed through this historic war between Bihan, Sub-Zero, and his ancestor, Hanzo, Scorpion. So if you saw that Mortal Kombat Scorpion's Revenge movie, some of this movie feels a little bit like it borrows from that storyline. The plot is very different, but the energy is a little bit the same. Like, give me the original Mortal Kombat movie, but make it Scorpion's Revenge. 
Some of the complaints about the movie that I've seen, and I do think that they're warranted, is that the plot gets a little out of control early on. There's some pacing issues with the way it sets up the main characters and gets them to Raiden, who in the Mortal Kombat story is a full-blown god tasked by the Elder Gods with guiding the champions of Earthrealm during each tournament's period. So if you're a longtime Mortal Kombat fan, you might be a little frustrated with how long they take to set things up like, okay, give us the tournament arc. We're here for the tournament. We just want to see some fighting. There is a lot of fighting. So I feel like the one misleading thing about the trailers is that you do see the characters fighting each other a lot. So you kind of assume that they're doing the tournament. But really, like I said, they're not going to do the actual tournament to the sequel. They have a very twisty way of explaining how they kind of have a tournament before they have the tournament. But the whole idea is that there have been many, many Mortal Kombat tournaments between the realms over thousands and thousands of years. And the one that they're prepping for in this movie for the sequel is just the most recent version of the tournament. But the movie isn't four hours long, so they only cover a little of that history with the idea I think that they'll dig deeper in the sequels. Obviously, they have to do the tournament, so I think we'll get at least one sequel. It would be too weird for them to do a whole movie just setting up the classic tournament that everybody loves from the games and then never actually do the proper tournament arc. It would be like them doing Godzilla vs. Kong, only just setting up the idea that they eventually fight in a future sequel and never actually seeing them fight. It would just piss too many people off if they did something like that. If you've been following the video game series for a good long while, the one brand new thing, the one thing that stands out is the Cole character. He is not from the video game series. Like I said, they sort of invented him for this movie as a POV character to reintroduce non-Mortal Kombat fans to the mythology. Like if you've never played the games, you never saw the original movie, the story of his character is basically meant to be the introduction to this world. There were way more characters from the classic games than I expected. I really went into this expecting a similar roster from the first Mortal Kombat movie, just like the classic OG characters. And yes, by far the biggest thing people commented about, the biggest missing OG character, was Johnny Cage. They do have an explanation for what's going on with him during the movie. He is referenced during the film, so he does exist within the universe, and he has already been confirmed for the sequel movie. The director said the only reason why they wanted to wait on doing him was just because of the way his personality, like his self-aggrandizing nature, shifted the tone of the story in the way his character is written to be very attention-seeking just fits better into a classic tournament arc, which they're doing in the sequel. Like, even though he's not the main character of that original 1990s film, he does dominate most of the plot. And one of the other differences with this film is that I think they're trying to be a little bit more serious with the tone. Like, it's a hard R. Like, really good example, that opening scene with Hanzo just going at it with all of Bihan's men, that's actually pretty tame compared to some of the level of fatalities that they get to later in the film. They take it pretty far with the fatalities. Like, even the actors said that they were surprised with how graphic they got during parts of the film. But like I said, if you've been following the games for a long time, you will spot all the video game moments. They are pretty faithful to the way a lot of these things go down. A lot of the fatalities, like a lot of the minor details. But I know earlier I made that Godzilla vs. Kong reference. This does feel like a very Godzilla vs. Kong type of film. Like you go into that movie knowing exactly what kind of movie it's going to be. Not expecting them to start quoting Shakespeare to each other. Just let them fight. Let them fight. So if you haven't already seen the movie, you should go into this new Mortal Kombat movie with those same levels of expectation. Like, let them fight. This is all about them just beating the crap out of each other. The difference there, though, is that Godzilla vs. Kong is more like going to see a giant boxing match, and going to a Mortal Kombat movie is more like seeing a giant MMA fight. Just on a practical level, the Mortal Kombat movie was way more low budget than I expected. I think they did that so that they could keep it hard R. The fight choreography was actually pretty solid, obviously way better than the original film. Special effects, visual effects have also come so far in the last 25 years since that original film that everything just looks a lot better. They do get way crazier with a lot of their special abilities and their powers in a way that they did not during that original 1990s movie. But because I haven't talked about the music, music also a big deal in the Mortal Kombat video game series, they didn't really use the original theme music in the trailer videos. I know people were wondering, like, what about the classic theme song? If you're a longtime fan and you saw the original movie, you will be happy to know that they do incorporate that classic theme music into the movie at some point. But just in general, I would say the film is okay. Like, it's a fun time. But in the same way that Godzilla vs. Kong has a bit of a silly story with a lot of cool stuff that happens during it. Like, the actual plot itself is a little ridiculous. But the movie itself is a lot of fun. So just make sure you go into Mortal Kombat with that level of expectation. 
Once you do have a chance to see the movie, just post all your reactions in the comments below and let me know what you want them to do with the sequels if they get multiple films. Later this week after the movie comes out, I will do a full video on the ending and how they set up the sequel and exactly what's happening. I've also got a new Falcon and Winter Soldier Dark Avengers video that I'm working on and my full Falcon and Winter Soldier episode 6 finale video will post Friday just like normal. So while you wait for everything, everyone click here for my new Marvel Shang-Chi trailer video and click here for my Falcon and Winter Soldier episode 6 finale trailer. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys tonight.